Mayo Best here for the Bliss Business Development Show. And today we actually have a bonus episode that is not actually a part of the original uh, plans for the season. But you know what? I just miss you guys too much and I just decided, you know, I'm going to do this anyway. And honestly, there's another reason why too. Now, this is going to be a different uh, episode because I'm not going to do any uh commercials i'm not going to do a lead intro and all that stuff that i normally do because i just want to get right to talking to you guys so it's going to be a very simple straight and forward uh brief episode but there's something that has happened recently in my business and it's positive but i wanted to share it with you guys because it's one of the very um i would say foundational principles that I try to teach to other entrepreneurs when I'm consulting or coaching them. And here's what you want to write down, guys. You always want to do your very best to control the variables that controls the outcomes. You always want to fight for positioning. Okay, so what do I mean by controlling the variables that controls the outcomes? What do I mean by fighting for positioning? Well, let's start with fighting for positioning first. Fighting for positioning means there are a lot of situations where sometimes you can like say maybe, you know, sell a service or sell a product. Now, if you can create a stronger position for yourself in terms of offering that service or offering that product, then that's what I want you to fight for if you can. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. In fact, I'll use myself and I'll use the situation that came up over the week that reminded me of this and just kind of gave me this <laughs> um, kind of happy moment of sort of thanking myself for remembering to always fight for the positioning. And here's what it was. Before I did this podcast, folks, um, there were a lot of um, opportunities for me to do a podcast from before. I actually did one before called Coffee with the Coach. I never released it to the public. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that I just couldn't really figure out how to monetize it. Now, a lot of folks have, you know, some sometimes I would say not quite controversial uh, views over whether or not you should charge guests and so forth. But I can say this. If you guys had any idea as to how much work it is to do these shows and to really plan them out and stay consistent and you know invest the money that you sometimes put into these shows to um, get them to increase in production value and stuff like that, um, it can get costly and it can take a lot of time from you both personally and professionally. All right, so with that said, I'm definitely of a strong belief that you should try to monetize your show if you can. Now, there was a time when I tried to do this before, as I said, uh, where when I tried to do coffee with the coach, I just could not figure out how to monetize it because, you know, it's the age old problem of you just don't have any value to offer to someone to want to pay to get on your show. And so I took those 25 episodes and I just shelved them. I still got them. They're in the can, as we like to say. And I decided that I was not going to do another podcast again until I could figure out how to monetize it. Now, I figured out how to monetize this show. And I've already monetized this show. But I'm not going to get into exactly how that works. As much as I'm going to talk about the mentality that I've had that led me to the situation or circumstances that gave me the ability to monetize the show. So what I'm getting at here is, you know, a lot of times it's about selling advertising and the way it works for us podcasters, for those that don't know, is that typically there are these huge advertising conglomerates that, um, Require that you have at least 10,000 episodes before they will even consider, or it's not even episodes, it's actually downloads, excuse me, 10,000 downloads per month before they will even have a conversation with you. You know, so that's pretty much an average of like, you know, a thousand downloads per episode is what they want you to have. And it's all possible 
but it takes a while to do that. Now, this is such the industry standard and there's literally nothing else out there for the most part that I'm aware of and that most podcasters are even aware of to where this is just what everybody expects, you know, for things to be. You know, this is how it, it functions in this industry. Well, I decided that, okay, I'm going to position myself to be able to control the variables. Now, what are the variables? The variables in this case are the advertising. So what did I do? How did I actually monetize my show? Well, before I started this show, I actually invested um, a large sum of my time and resources into uh, starting an advertising agency. And because I had my own agency, I literally could dictate what the value was for my show at that point. Thus, I started to control the variables that control the outcomes. And that's what I mean by positioning, fighting for positioning. In fact, this is so unheard of. I, you know, I, I posted um, an ad because now I'm trying to help other podcasters too. You know, just like I do with you guys and trying to help you with your businesses. I'm also now trying to help podcasters to monetize their shows using the same method and format that I have. And I'm teaching them exactly what it is that I do. Well, someone had put up a post that was uh <laughs> let's just say they were in strong disbelief okay and the type of words that they use is they thought that you know that this was not legitimate as they say because it was unheard of because they were saying how in their response to my um ad that i had put out they were saying to me or to i guess the actual um rest of the community that this sounds like a scam basically they didn't use the word scam they said it doesn't sound legitimate because i have about three sponsors and they won't talk to you unless you have ten thousand downloads per month so she did not believe that this was a real deal and so what that really was quite frankly was a testament to how different and unique this solution actually is. And it really just honestly validated my statement that it was a game changer. No fluff. <laughs> it's a game changer because that opportunity, okay, and my ability to actually, guys, I want you to pay attention because I've just etched out a brand new sort of market within this whole market of podcast monetization that doesn't even really for the most part exist so much so to the tune that she actually said what she said right and she's a seasoned podcaster so that is only possible when you position yourself okay by investing into your infrastructure as a business owner now i'll tell you a little secret I learned that through studying acquisitions. You see, with acquisitions, you learn how a how a company is made more successful. And one of the things that they tend to do in companies to make a company more valuable and to actually increase their their um, their revenue is that sometimes they will purchase their verticals. They will purchase, let's say, the logistics if they are into some type of uh, shipping company. In fact, a great example about this is actually Amazon. If you look at how they handle shipping, and of course that grew out of Jeff, Jeff Bezos having this really sort of customer centric approach to doing his business to where he was just looking for a way to deliver a better service as it relates to his customers. And out of doing that, he had to do what? He positioned his company, he had the money, he took that money, reinvested it into his infrastructure, and now he has his own shipping. 
Now, what that does is it decreases the cost that he normally would have to pay to whoever he was working with. I'm not sure if it was FedEx or UPS or whoever, but whoever the shippers he was using before, he didn't have to really use them anymore because he's developed his own shipping fleet. Okay, so he absorbed that portion of the business, but in doing so, not only did it streamline his customer service, not only did it make his customers a lot more happier, not only was he able to start delivering his packages way faster, he also was able to, you know, gain a competitive edge as a byproduct of doing that. So he increased his positioning massively. But what he had to do is what I'm trying to teach you guys to do in the same thing that I did. And honestly, I learned how to take this approach to my business through paying attention to CEOs like Jeff Bezos and others as well. So he basically, you know, he increased his positioning. He controlled the variables that controls the outcomes, guys. You have to fight for that position and for your business. Sometimes you have folks that will want to partner with you and bring something to the table and you realize that when they're trying to partner with you and bring things to the table, you have to sometimes question, well, does it make sense for me to invest into this myself <laughs> or does it make more sense for me to partner with you, right? Because of course, when you partner with that other person, you know, you're not going to make as much money. You're not going to have as much control and so forth. Now, I'm not saying you do this with everything. You have to decide and use your own judgment as to when and where this makes sense to do. But I did want to share this with you guys because, you know, I'm benefiting massively from having a position that I have. And I only have that position because of my mindset and the whole sort of approach that I have at my business. So I didn't want to make this video too long, but it is something that I really wanted to share with you guys because it's something that has been benefiting me quite a bit. And, you know, I offer you guys, ex <laughs> I'm going to say full transparency in terms of a lot of things that I do. And I really want you to understand the method behind the madness of certain things that I say, because that may not have been the first time you guys have heard me say that. But I really wanted to go with a little bit more of an example to show you the benefit of what happens when you control the variables that controls the outcomes. And you should be constantly looking for opportunities to do that, guys. OK, constantly look for opportunities to strengthen your position because it will increase your value proposition to your customers. It will give you a competitive edge. And here's another thing it does. When you work in this way, when you approach your business with this type of a mindset, what it also does, guys, it keeps you from having to worry about your competitors because it becomes difficult to copy you. It becomes difficult to compete with someone who's always pretty much adding more value and becoming more dynamic. Now, before I end this video, I do feel the urgent need to give you guys a disclaimer. There is a little bit of wisdom and discernment that you want to use with what I'm telling you, because I don't want you at the same time to end up diversifying yourself so much that you start to spread yourself thin or go into a whole nother business. No, that is not what I'm advocating. That is not what I'm suggesting. There's a little thing I like to call diversified focus. So you want to make sure that if you're going to position yourself around a new service in your company, that it's not something that's so contrastingly different from what you're already doing. If anything, it should be something that is complementary, something that logically feels as though it's the next thing that you would do in a progression. It should feel organic. It should not feel like, for instance, if you're a fisherman, and you fish out on boats and that the, the the next thing you add to your business is something like, you know, uh, life insurance. Like you're selling life insurance and your main thing is fishing. I mean, I get it for the guys or the women that are on the boat, but how are you gonna build that business? You know, so that, that would be crazy. 
those are not the type of moves you want to make all right that's not the type of diversification that you want to exercise and that's not the type of positioning so i want to be clear you want to be very selective be very picky what you decide to position yourself with for your business okay so it shouldn't just be anything right all right if you guys have got any questions about this you can always reach out to me at mayo best at paradigm to digital.com and i'll be looking forward to your emails so i'm going to wrap this show up guys and say hey thank you i just wanted to give you this bonus episode uh before we actually start our new season which won't be next week it'll be the week after actually i believe so stay tuned guys who knows i might even throw another bonus episode to you guys <laughs> next week as well if something else progresses and happens in fact actually i think i will do that okay so this is not of course our regular programming and it will not be actually far from how we're going to do the new show um it's going to be completely different format and everything from this but guys um if whoever's listening to this on this podcast please 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 i love to see you over at our channel on youtube okay if you can there's a video version of all these um episodes you know check out the video subscribe you know and definitely with the podcast guys it really helps us when you download the podcast please it actually helps us get our numbers up (laughs) as i just told you okay so without further ado guys you guys have a wonderful week please be safe take care and god bless bye-bye